Hey everybody, it's Dana. Welcome back. Today I'm going to be showing you three ways to work with a stencil and some ink. So today I'm going to use a beautiful stencil and this stencil happens to be a new one from Simon Says Stamp and some Bristol cardstock. So to get started, I'm going to temporarily adhere my paper to my craft mat. And for my stencil, this one is called Folk Dance, like I said, from Simon Says Stamp. And I'm going to use some micro pore tape to hold my stencil in place. Now these techniques are really, really easy to accomplish with any color ink. And you only need one ink pad. So for today, I'm using the Catherine Pooler Something Borrowed. Now I love her inks and I will share some videos that I uh, featured last week on my YouTube channel and blog. So I am really going to ink up a small mini blending tool with some of this gorgeous blue color. Now normally to stencil you would just bring the ink directly onto your stencil directly onto your paper. So you guys have probably seen this done several times and it's a very easy technique and it really gives you great results. So I am just going to add this color on and I'm putting on a really good amount because this color is happens to be a very bright and vibrant color and I love this stencil and I really want this color on this first go around to really pop. So I am going to rub up and down my stencil to get that ink really into my background but also by doing this is going to create a little bit of a halo behind each image so now since that's done I can go ahead and pull up my stencil and you're going to see again the typical way that you would normally stencil or apply ink rather when you would normally stencil. So I'm just gonna go ahead and lift up the stencil and you'll see this gorgeous background. Easy peasy, again, your normal way to stencil. And you can very faintly see a nice little shadow behind the images. Now, for the second way, I'm going to use some whipped spackle and I'm also going to use the same ink. I'm just going to grab that ink dauber and add a little bit of color directly onto my craft mat. And now I'm going to grab out some of this whipped spackle. Adding it directly to the ink gives me an opportunity to add color to that white whipped spackle. And now I'm going to have a custom blend of color. Now, like I said, you can do this with any shade of the Catherine Pooler inks, or if you do not have those, you can use any color ink pad you have. Now you can also tint this if you have re-inkers as well, and you don't have an ink pad. So I really like this color, but now if you ever wanna darken this up, just go back, grab your mini ink blending tool, pop down a little bit more color, and then you can go ahead and start blending in that color. Now you can make your color as light or as dark as you want. Just make sure you mix in the color well. Now if you want to have a little bit of variation in your color, then don't mix all of it in. And when you go to apply it to your stencil, you have a little bit of a um, strie in the color when you apply it. So I'm going to grab some of that spackle off of my craft mat and now bring it to this stencil. And when I bring it to my stencil, I want to try to do light, even strokes just to get even pressure. Now, when you're stenciling with this whip spackle, it's pretty much like putting on cake frosting. It goes on very, very smooth and really creamy. So the more you work with this spackle, the softer it's going to get. So like I said, I'm just trying to get an even coat of this spackle on. And when I think I have the amount I need, I'm going to lightly go right across 
and start removing any of the extra spackle that I have. Now I can remove my micropore tape, just going to get along the bottom where my tape had covered up my stencil. Again, just trying to make an even layer. I can lift up my stencil and look how gorgeous that background is. Now again, it's not going to be as bright as my first color because it's obviously not direct color. So you see this color here, and then you see how dark the original color is because it's direct color. All right, I'm now going to grab my ink pad and put it directly to my craft mat. Now you see that's a lot of color there. It's very, very juicy. Now for this technique, I'm gonna come in with translucent embossing paste. Now this paste has no color to it. It's just totally clear. So I'm gonna grab a good amount of that out. And this translucent paste is a little bit sticky. So I'm going to really have to work in this paste and get that color moving. Now you can see I'm really getting a much vibrant color compared to what it was with just the white embossing or the white spackle. So I'm just gonna continuously work this color into that translucent embossing paste. And like I said, I'm going to get a color that's going to be right in the middle of the um, direct to paper with just the ink and the white spackle. Once I have everything totally mixed in, I'm going to bring that directly onto my stencil and again, do the same exact method and wipe that embossing paste right down onto my stencil. Again, trying to get a really nice even coat. When you're working with this translucent paste, just like I said before, it's going to, the more you work with it, the softer it gets and the easier it is to apply. So I'm making sure I have everything covered at first to make sure all of my little details are all covered. And now I can go ahead and start scraping off any extra that I have and getting a nice smooth layer down. Now this stencil is very detailed, so I just wanna make sure I have everything covered. Now I can remove my tape and lift up my stencil, and now I have another shade of blue. So again, I've only used one color ink, and now I have three gorgeous shades, three different hues with only one color of ink. So here I have this color here. I have my next shade, which is lighter because that was using the white spackle paste. And then I have my darker blue because that was just directly to paper. So you can see how beautiful you can get great backgrounds with just using one of the Catherine Pooler inks. So I hope that I have inspired you guys to pull out those ink pads and work with your different mediums to get great looking cards. Again, you can do this with any of the lovely and vibrant colors that you can find in the Catherine Pooler ink collection. Now the ink color I used here for the Yes Sentiment, which happens to be from Simon Says Stamp, Yay Stamp Set, is the Tierra Yellow, also out of the Catherine Pula collection. Thank you guys for hanging out with me today and I'll see you in another video soon. Take care everybody, bye-bye.